One, two, three, four. It's Tuesday. Uncle Bill joining us a little bit later on for School of the Fools. We'll get to our two cent history lesson. We'll take a look at our trivia question from last night. Hmm. See if we indeed got a winner. And I think we 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 have a questionable first winner. Okay. So we'll get to that in uh, in just a little bit. Well, if there's anything questionable, we're all over it. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, we're Mike and John. Got it going on. We brought are? to you by Firehouse Doors. Yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to find out uh, about a new show that's coming to the dial and give you details on how you can win tickets. And that's dinner and a show. Right. Tiny females. Dial. Oh, I'm sorry. Little women. Yeah. <laughs> that's close. <laughs> tiny females. Yeah. That's the prequel. Yeah. Okay. See, so they go from tiny females right. to, to little, to little, little women. women. Yeah, yeah. Then they go to big mamas. Right. <laughs> okay. That's a different show. <laughs> I don't believe that's at the dial, although maybe they'll put it on at some point. I don't know. We're going to write it, yeah. and they're going to perform <laughs> Okay, it. sure. Good luck with that. Yeah. Steve DeBruyne's like, all right, block. <laughs> Not talking to you guys <laughs> yet. So we'll check that out and more. But first, a look at local news brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. All right, here's what's going on. After five months of deliberation and searching, the Livingston County Board of Commissioners has named their appointment for the position of public health officer. The board voted 6-3 to three in support of Matt Bolang, with Commissioners Nakagiri, Drick, and Heldserman voting against his appointment. Most public comments concerned the appointment. Many of those who addressed the board were repeat speakers who've been critical of the health department from the beginning. Several expressed concern that the board was acting in haste, saying that four of the nine city commissioners won't be returning to the board next year. So the decision, they say, should be postponed until February, even though the original goal was to have that vacancy filled by July 1st. Alcohol and drug use appear to be factors in a crash early Monday that killed a man in Lyon Township. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office said first responders were called about 4.45 in the morning to the scene of the crash off Pontiac Trail west of Martindale. 35-year-old Seth Lowry of Whitmore Lake was reportedly driving a 2022 Kia Nero westbound on Pontiac Trail near Willow Lane when he drifted off the roadway and struck a tree. Lowry, who was not wearing a seatbelt, was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office Crash Reconstruction Unit say alcohol and drugs appear to be factors in the crash. And funeral services have been announced for a longtime Howell public servant who passed away last week after a multi-year battle with colon cancer. Steve Maynard passed away at home in Howell last Friday, November 11th. That was his 82nd birthday. Maynard, who resigned from Howell City Council last month after 23 years, announced that he had terminal cancer and was being treated in hospice. He ran for City Council in 1999 after a 34-year career as an educator with Howell Public Schools. His family will receive friends this Thursday, November 17th from 2 p.m. until the time of his funeral service at 5 p.m. That will be at the Watkins Brothers Funeral Homes McDonald's Chapel in Howell. Maynard is survived by his wife, Pat, of 59 years, son, Scott, daughter-in-law, Michelle, and granddaughters, Marissa and Maisie. In remembrance of his life, the family is asking any charitable donations be made to the Livingston County United Way or the Howell Nature Center. You'll find details and links at MikeAndJohnPodcast.com. And that's what's going on. And news brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. Mark Binkley could barely drive a car when his dad bought the best jewelry store in town from Mr. Cooper. He spent a lot of time there after school and weekends, enough to know that he loved the jewelry business. Mark and his family were exiting a Sunday church service when Mark saw something more dazzling than any precious stone, Barb Lockery. Successful and beautiful was a combination too great to resist. And around Valentine's Day, a nervous and pale Mark Binkley asked Barb Lockery to be his bride. They were married in the rustic, cozy church sanctuary where they met and decided to build Cooper and Binkley Jewelers together. You'll see them there every day, working hard just like you, helping people make special times in their lives even more special with a gift from Cooper and Binkley. They'd love to hear your stories of romance at Cooper and Binkley Diamond Jewelers in lovely downtown Brighton. All right, it's time for tiny girls. No. Little women. Uh, little women, that's right. 
and classic being put on at the Dio. We're going to talk with Anna Dreslinski Cook, who plays Joe, one of the March sisters. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Anna. It's Mike and John from Mike and John Got It Going On. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing this morning? All right. So you're playing Joe in the Dials production of Little Women, Joe March. And for those yes. who aren't familiar with the story, just give us a little little summary, and then uh, we'll find out a little bit more. Yeah. So um, Little Women is a story that's based off of Louisa May Alcott's life. Um, she definitely idealized her life, but it's about four young women growing up with their father away uh, during the Civil War. And um, it's really a hope, uh, a hopeful story about um, just pushing the limits of what women were allowed to do. They were very tied to, um, you know, the home and a specific role within the family. And the sister I play, Jo, is very much against that. So it's her experiences in life growing up, learning to deal with pushing um, the boundaries and limits of, you know, wanting to be a writer so badly and really continuing to follow that dream even after she faces a lot of rejection. Um, so really staying true to who she is and how life really wasn't necessarily open or suited to her doing that at first, but she still fought and um, still fights for it. So um, really a great story about, you know, um, sisters and, you know, relationships with your mom. And it's really, um, I think everybody can really relate to the story and the pursuit of happiness and, you know, fulfilled dreams. So. Well, especially now, I wonder if this play, which has had so many different adaptations through the years, of course, uh, if if you think in the, the, the current environment we find ourselves in and uh, recent events of, say, November 8th, if, the, if, if a production that is highlighting the role of women and their uh, pursuit of, you know, individual freedom and, and, uh, and expression, you know, has a, a special resonance now. Yes, I absolutely Thank think you. so. And, you know, this, but, uh, you know, the story is based um, during the Civil War, you know, so another time when our country was incredibly divided. And so I think it's, it's perfectly suited now to help bring people back together. And that's exactly what the book was about, you know, um, about women's rights and, and also about, you know, a divided, like there, there are things life still goes on, even though, you know, we have these crazy polar opposite ideas that, you know, people are fighting about. And yet this this life is about so much more than these arguments that, you know, happen within our country. So I think it's it's pretty um, similar to what, you know, is happening now. And people can relate to that tremendously, but in, in a way that's unifying and it's really kind of cool. So so what led you to uh, to trying out for the part of Joe? Is that something that's uh, close to you or is, uh, is, is it just that you ended up getting that part when you auditioned? So I have dreamed of playing Jo March for many years. Um, she is a beast of a character um, in a lot of ways. It just, you know, when Sutton Foster originated the role, it's just, I, I she did an amazing job and it's a very difficult role to do. So I, when I heard that the dial was doing low women, I just had to go out. She, Jo March reminds me of myself in a lot of ways. Um, and I think every woman can say that. I think so many women who came out for the show just felt a little piece of Joe lives within them. So I saw it and knew that I needed to audition for it and knew that that was the role that, you know, if I was going to get cast in this show, that that was the one that I was connected to um, the most. And that's exactly what, you know, Steve um, DeBrun saw in me as well. And so I'm really thankful to be cast in this once of a lifetime role because no, you don't get many opportunities to play such a powerful character and a story worth telling um, because a lot of times, you know, you're just up there and love is a great thing to portray on stage and everything, but this was just such a powerful story about female independence that um, it's just such a privilege to get to play. So. Well, and that character, as you said, I mean, I, I can see why, you know, that was one that you kind of always sought after. I mean, it's been played by Katherine Hepburn through the years, uh, Winona Ryder, uh, more recently by Maya Hawke. And so, you know, it is an iconic character and, you know, obviously uh, one that would be most sought out. Um, so, you know, like I said, with all these different adaptations, I mean, this is an American classic, obviously. Uh, and it's, you know, it's been on stage and screen and in dozens of varieties. Uh, so, you know, is there a way that you're trying to pitch this production differently? Uh, or are you just tr trying to just, you know, give it, uh, give it what it's due and just put it out there on the stage? I think, you know, with Joe, there are things, it's hard 
I think oftentimes when you look at the, you know, all of these incredible people who have done this role, you don't necessarily think that you can add anything new to it. But what I have found the most in portraying Joe is that being true to myself and my own, you know, thinking, pulling and drawing from, I'm also one of four um, kids. And so pulling on my own experiences from my own sisters and my own siblings has really, um, flavored a lot of the lines and character choices a little differently um and i refused to watch the full you know sutton foster um version because i wanted to stay true to what you know i wanted to bring to the role and see what differences there were um so i would say just trying to really listen and pull and draw from my own life experiences to really give muscles to joe has been you know really amazing and kind of how i'm changing things up but i would say even though it's american classic the music is very modern, so it's an old story set with more modern music, and so um, we had our donor preview the other night, and one of the biggest things, because it's really not done often, so many people are not familiar with the music, they were really surprised at the way that the music was. They were like, that's really catchy, that's actually, that's not what I expected. So it definitely was a lot different. It's funny, it's, you don't, you know, you think of some of these period pieces as a little stuck up in some senses or a little too formal and Joe Marsh just tosses that right out the door especially in this script and this adaptation and so you get such hysterical lines from everyone around her and the writing is just so good and the music is just so captivating and you could listen to the music without any storyline and just be so connected to it so that's something really special that the score stands on its own all right you said you had the preview now when does when does the show open and when can folks uh, start getting tickets our show opens this Friday on um, the 18th, and they can start getting tickets now, and I do recommend, if you want tickets to see this family classic, and again, very family-friendly, you can bring your mom, your sister, your kids, anyone, really, it's a fun time, but we are almost sold out of yeah. the entire run. That's what I, I thought, I mean, you've already got some sold-out shows, so people that want to see this, they better uh, act on it soon, uh, yes. and online, it's Dio Theater, that's with an R-E, that's how you know it's good. Dot com. Yes. <laughs> so that's, of course, dinner and a show. Yeah, a great absolutely. Show. Uh, yeah, and you call the uh, dial at 517-672-6009. And matter of fact, we're going to give away a pair of tickets to the show on December 23rd. That's a Friday night, right, right. before Christmas. What right. a great way to so, get to the holiday. Uh, yeah, we got a pair of tickets. And uh, for people that are going to take part in our Tuesday night trivia on Facebook, that's TNT. Uh, you'll have a chance to win those tickets to go see Little Women at the Dial. But again, uh, that is actually, I think the 23rd is actually the final show. You want to catch this now. So for your opportunity to, to fill up what seats are left, uh, again, online, diotheater.com, or give them a call, 517-672-6009. All right, Anna, thanks for joining us this morning. Anna Dreslin Cook playing the part of Joe March in Little Women at the Dial. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you, guys. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, it should be a great show. And uh, as John said, we're going to give away tickets in TNT. That's tonight's trivia. So I'm going to have a good question. And remember, when we ask the questions, you have to be the first one to get it yeah, right. First correct first answer. First correct answer. And so. we, by the way, are the judging panel as to what constitutes a correct answer. Because sometimes people uh, yeah, dance right. around it. And you already said that tonight or uh, Monday nights. Yeah, not that we're giving any way the thing away from Monday night trivia, right. but there was a you can't answer a question with a question, or like if it were this, then this is what I would say. And, and no, those kind of no things. double guessing. No, we avoid that. Yeah. You can't put the here's my 17 top answers. No, no, we take your first yeah. guess. <laughs> right. All right. Don't so. forget, uh, Firehouse Doors has been one of our OG sponsors, the OG sponsor. No, the we OG. appreciate Firehouse Doors. Serving Livingston County residents for the past 21 year, uh, 24 years. Family owned and operated business, striving to treat each customer like family. They'll even take people like John King as a customer. That's what a great company they are. Wow. I thought they had higher standards than that. Well, it's because you know me. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yes. And, of course, Mike Witt, a proud U.S. Air Force veteran. So it's a veteran-owned local business. It's your one-stop shop for residential, commercial, and rolling steel overhead door needs. And as we said, don't exclude. Don't not think about your rolling steel overhead door needs. That's your RSODs or RSODs. RSODs. Yeah. Yes. Think about that.
All right. I'm pondering that right now <laughs> as we speak. Viral Stores, Livingston County's only authorized distributor for CHI overhead doors. Call them today, 810-599-7480. And, and, and a triple Andy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like the triple Lindy. It's the triple Andy of we are still taking entries to give away another $100 Visa gift card courtesy of Firehouse Doors. All you have to do is go to MikeAndJohnPodcast.com. Find um, the fun and game section. Fun and games. Because it's fun to play yeah. games. And then you'll see the contest entry right there. Put your name in, and we'll draw that out here in a couple of weeks. So your chance to win a $100 gift card um, right here, courtesy of Firehouse Doors. All right. So coming up, Uncle Bill joining us in a few minutes with School of Fools. And in Monday Night Trivia, MNT, brought to you by real estate agent Tanya Zirkel. That's sold by Tanya Z. Her motto, comfort is the key to home. The question, 45% of people. You know people. Single people. Oh, single people. Not married people. No. Single people. Okay. Say they want to know this about someone before going on a date with them. Well, there's a lot of things you would want to know about. There are, but I can't believe 45% of people said this is what they want to know. Okay. So we got a ton of guesses. Like Linda, she says, are you a morning person or a night owl? Mm. That's good to know. That is. Because you might be going to brunch as your dinner date. I guess that depends <laughs> on the age. <laughs> uh, what kind of family they come from? That's a great guess, too. Jennifer says, are you capable of cleaning your own house? <laughs> and do you? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm out. That's good to know. <laughs> but I, I was... Can I just pay for the dinner and then? <laughs> um, speaking of cooking, uh, Jennifer said, "Can you cook? Do they know how to cook? Yeah, not a cook and clean." Yeah, Debbie know. said, "If they own any flannel shirts." <laughs> Very not specific. sure if that's a qualification. Yeah. Patty gets right down to it and says, "Credit score, please." <laughs> Susie, uh, I'm going to need to run your credit score. <laughs> yeah. Susie uh, I'm said, sorry, this date is over. Career or job? Melody wants to know if you have any STDs. Probably good to know on a first date. Hmm. Well, you know. Uh, I guess, you know, yeah. it's if you're going to go out with them. Well, yeah. Uh, Drew Goble, our good friend Drew, says criminal history. <laughs> See, he's a double guesser, though. Did he double guess? He said criminal history or driving record. They're both wrong. If they still live at home. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's what's Beth said, do you smoke? If they're like cats. Right. If their ex is in their is in their phone. Are they still uh, now now if they have an ex with kids, yeah. you could see where okay, they're gonna, you know, obviously have to co parent, but uh, if their ex is, you know, like Lori wants to know if they drink too much or says if they drink too much. Well, you'll find that on the first day. Uh, you certainly will. <laughs> <laughs> Madonna said if they have any mental health issues right. or mental issues. Um, speaking of which, several people said their political affiliation or who they voted for. <laughs> well, you know. I guess that could be a yeah. deal breaker. Uh, religion. Our friend Jordan yeah. said, you know, religion. That's certainly um, a consideration. Katie said, wears underwear or goes commando? Well, you'll find out. I mean, well, maybe not on the first you date. Know, if you're it rounding, depends on if who. you're rounding third. <laughs> and for home. <laughs> Stephanie said their age. That's probably good to know. Well, you're right. I mean, I mean, you look at the profile pic, and then you meet him in person, and you're like, Who's, who are you? That was a 12-year-old <laughs> Who are you? What was that, your high school yearbook photo? <laughs> uh, the correct answer, and this is where it comes in. Too. Okay. 45% of singles want to know this about someone before going on a date with them. Right. The correct answer, believe it or not, it's not the 70s, uh, their astrological sign. What's your sign? Hey, man. What's your sign? <laughs> We're here at the Regal Beagle. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you're a Libra. <laughs> but people, you know. So Christine Ann said. That's a real thing. I'd answer that 45% of single women want to know, what's your sign? But do men want to know that too? That's a good question with your answer. Right. That's a good answer question. I I think that counts. What do you think? I think 
you're an easy grader. Well, yeah. I want to take your class. Well, you know, if you talk to some of my students. Uh, Suzanne said they're astrological sign. Right. So she nailed it, but her guess came in after Christine Ann's did. Right. And you don't think... I think well, I Christine think she, Ann. I think Christine Ann is saying, well, if it's just women, then I'd say this. But do men want to know this? A lot of guys don't give a crap what your sign is. <laughs> they really don't. They don't even you know don't the know. astrological What, do you think signs? you're all guys? Let's face it. We right. only care if they care. All right. Okay? You're, if they're into astrology, suddenly we're like, oh, yeah, oh, I agree. Oh, yeah, you're an Aries. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yo, totally. Okay, so let's just say someone's born March 27th, John. What sign are they? I don't know. See, I we don't. Know, care. I only know my sign. I'm a Leo. We don't That's care. it. I don't know. You know what? They both win. They both get a oh, participation really? medal. Really? Oh, okay. And and win. <laughs> I think the. I, all right. Should we get out the Pop-O-Matic? Break the tie, or you want to just you know? You know what? We'll just let's uh, let them both brag. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll let them both brag. All right. All right. That was our trivia brought to you by real estate agent Tanya Zirkel. It's sold by Tanya Z, whose model is comfort is the key to home. Find her online at soldbytanyaz.com. Uncle Bill joining us in uh, in just a little bit for uh, another edition of School of the Fools. I believe I'm up by a few. A few I think you're on a three three in a row, wow. fella. Doesn't happen very it often. It has been a while. That, yeah. I, that I have a streak. <laughs> on this. On this. <laughs> on this. Speaking that's... of underwear. Really? Yeah, uh, really. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, you think, oh, I... you're going to play like you wouldn't have done the same thing to me? That's not a streak. That's a skit. <laughs> yeah, well, same thing. Streak, <laughs> skit, same streak. thing. Same thing. A streak is yeah. like if your hair is running. <laughs> like if you got too much oh, uh, now I feel. Correct. Now I feel really attacked. <laughs> <laughs> now I've <I'm> really been <laughs> insulted. <laughs> well, if your hair was Because you can't use that insult on me. <laughs> I'm going to be insulted now for sure. All right, we'll give you the streak instead of the skit. <laughs> you can have the skit and I don't, the streak. I don't want either. <laughs> All, All right. right. So we'll check in with Uncle Bill in uh, in just a few minutes. Hey, did did uh, did you hear we're giving away a thousand dollars? What? December third. What? You'll have your chance to Come win. On. In Fowlerville during the Christmas in the Ville Some celebration. Goofy little podcast in a basement's gonna give away a thousand dollars cash. dollars. What kind of? Oh yeah, what we kind are. of hoopla is going on oh, here. Oh, that's right. We're, so here's and, the deal. and we're knee deep in it, fella. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Here's the deal. I didn't even tell John this. It's just you're all finding this out for the first time, along with the money that we gave away, that we're giving away. Uh, I got a lead on Hopper, an official Mike oh, and John. Oh wow! Got it going on Hopper. All right. All right. Bye. Wait a minute. You're saying my. <laughs> My laundry well, basket is no. This will be our thousand dollar. Oh, oh, okay, okay. This is for the Christmas in the Ville <laughs> okay, Hopper. Okay, okay, okay. I got a lead on it. All right, got my peeps on it. I see. Did some research. I emailed the guy. Then I called him yesterday. Wow. I got a meeting in an alley in Detroit, <laughs> <laughs> where I'm going to score us a Hopper. Hey, bud, come here. Now, if he opens up his coat and there's a bunch of Hoppers <laughs> hanging there, right? I, I'm not sure if it's brass, gold, <laughs> so, plastic, some kind of rusty yeah. steel. All right. But I'm working on a it hopper. It'll be. Uh, It'll be uh, the official hopper. Yeah. First time use will be December third at Christmas in the Ville in downtown Fowlerville. That's right. And of course, it's an all-day event, culminating in the parade. Due down, to crowd control, yeah. we can only have the hopper there during limited time. Right. But we'll give you an opportunity. You come down to Christmas in the Ville. You'll find the Mike and John tent. And you'll register to win a thousand dollars cash, which we will then announce the winner on the podcast the following Monday, which is the fifth. Third, fourth, fifth. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. The fifth, Monday the fifth. December fifth. <laughs> so that'll give you like three weeks of yeah. how to spend your money. Right. So but you have to come to Christmas in the Ville in person to register. And you must be eighteen or over. And by the way, we have hidden cameras we're gonna have uh, on the scene so you're not filling out extra Extra forms for your family and friends. We it's know. one form per person. We know. Yeah. Oh, we know. I see. We know how some of the people operate. <laughs> yeah. Bring your own pen because yeah. it's going to be cold in the pen. Kind of freeze up. Pencils maybe, yeah, pencils don't write good on it. Right? Well, I got to buy. Remind me to get some extra. Oh, that's right. You got the you got the glossy cards. Yeah, we're so gonna, those aren't. Gonna we're gonna. Yeah, we'll have some official right. Christmas in the Ville entry <laughs> forms. We'll figure that part out. Trust us. 
Well, you know. Trust anyway, that. so yes, December 3rd, downtown <laughs> Fowlerville, your chance to win $1,000 cash. That's right. And if you want to give half of it back to the house, you can do that too. <laughs> I mean, they can, but I wouldn't be. Careful. Probably won't I happen. Don't think that's. But you happen. can. Maybe you can pass it on. Maybe you'll take those ten, one hundred dollar bills, and you'll go, yeah. and you get a hundred, and you get a hundred. Right. Give them to people on the street. Could. Well, yeah, that's why we're going to do the drawing on the fifth. Right. We're not just going to be walking around downtown with a thousand dollars. Hey, no, no, no. When you have this kind of money. Yeah. No, Uncle Pennybags. So we're going to do that December December third in Fowlerville. Be sure to stop by our Mike and John got it going on tent. It'll be located near where they're selling nuts and other things. Right? Uh, Isn't that what Steve told us? Right. We're, we're, we're going to put it by the nut tank. I think he meant we're nuts. Something I like think that. that's what he was really saying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's real simple. You just fill out the form. Name, city, phone number, boom. Social security yeah. number, credit card. <laughs> okay, maybe not those. No, just very, very simple. Name, phone number, yeah. city. Yeah. That's it. Boom. And, and we won't. We're not going to sell the information. Anybody no, 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 no. It's just for this whatever. purpose only. And then it's, it's, a, it's. Destroyed. Then we're starting a bonfire. Yeah. Then we're, <laughs> well, not down here in the basement. That'd be kind of fun. All right. All right. So that's coming up. Also, for those that haven't heard yet, we do have a Mike and John got it going on daily newsletter, which you can subscribe to. Which I did. I got my first one yesterday. Yes, you did. I did. And I that's said, right. Look at that. Mike and John are emailing me. <laughs> what do they want? MikeandJohnPodcast.com. You go there and uh, you will see the sign up right on the front page. And your chance to get a daily newsletter of the latest stories right in your inbox. <laughs> inbox. -a. Inbox. -a. Okay. So, right. So check it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Two cent history lesson. Today is uh, November 15th. Brought to you by our friend Drew Goble. Didn't we mention Drew Goble already? He was one of the. He made a double guess. Is he trying yeah. to get double mentions on the show? This Drew Goble. Yeah, I don't know. Of Oakland Insurance. You know, he's also with Michigan-based Franken with Insurance. They have chicken there. Well, not at the. Not at insurance. insurance no, I mean. Insure your chicken. <laughs> you could. And get a prize chicken. I'm sure they, right. they'd probably work out a policy for that you. That chicken has nice legs. All right. If Good you breasts. believe the best relationships with chickens are. Honest, upfront, and fair. And insured. And juicy. <laughs> Call Drew Goble at Oakland Insurance. 248-647-2500. That's a juicy chicken. It's juicy chicken Tuesday. And we're officially right. off the rails. Right. Hold on. Let me write that down. Juicy right. chicken. Okay. All right. Juicy chicken. What would you name a juicy chicken? All right. Today is uh, also America Recycles Day. It's National Bunt Day, as in like bunt cake. Yeah, the bunt with the D in it. Not a big bunt person. Bunt cake. I'm not into bunts. <laughs> not a bunt man. Not a bunt man. <laughs> Even if it's juicy chicken. <laughs> well, you know, is it a juicy? Bunt? <laughs> I like nice bunts. All right, uh, it's also National Clean Out Your Refrigerator Day. <laughs> okay, yeah. If you got some juicy buns in there, get them out. Oh, yes, National Clean Out Your Refrigerator Day. Right. It's National Raisin Brand Cereal Day. Do they really put two scoops anymore? Uh, they I, have to. I. I. Uh, they have to. Yeah, but how big's the scoop? Well, that's yeah, that's the thing. There you go. That's where the lawyers get involved. Yeah. That's uh, that's National Clean Out Your Insides Day too. When it's National Raisin Brand Cereal Day. And it's uh, Pack Your Mom's Lunch Day today. 1777, the Continental Congress approved the Articles of Confederation. And you know what they were. I do. They were the precursor to the U.S. Constitution. Right. And basically what they amounted to was, hey guys, let's all just cooperate and, and, and you, you, you promise that you're going to fulfill what you say you're going to do, but we're not going to have any like actual things that you have to do. You just promise you're going to be good. Dude. And then when that flopped, <laughs> it's like, well, I guess we have to have some rules. Rules. 1806, explorer Zebulon Pike spotted the mountaintop, now known as Pike's Peak. It went something like this. <laughs> Very nice. That's a historical reenactment right it there. It kind of was. You. Call yeah. me Zeb. <laughs> Zebulon Pike. Right. 
Not to be confused with Captain Christopher Pike. Or Zebulon McCahan. No. Who the McCallahan. Hell? Who's Zebulon McCallum? So it was one of those How the West Was Won series. Oh, I see. So yeah. McCahan, Christopher Callahan. Pike, on the other hand, was the oh. original captain of oh, the Enterprise. Oh, yeah. Man, yeah. He yeah. didn't see Pike's no, Peak. No. I mean, he did, but it Maybe was later somewhere else. In the future. 1904. <laughs> King Camp Gillette. Oh. King Camp Gillette. King Camp Gillette. You know, they are. Invented the first razor with disposable blades. How about that? That's a Gillette. King Camp. Was his name Camp, but he was mm. a king? You know, or did he just call himself? I'm the king of razor blades. I'm King I, Camp Gillette. I, I guess. I. It was on this day in 1937, the first congressional session in air conditioned chambers was held. <laughs> wow. Still a lot of hot air, but they had the well, AC. That's why, they, that's why they, they needed the AC. November. Yeah. 1956. Love Me Tender, the first film starring Elvis Presley, premiered in New York. And frankly, arguably his only good acting job. I don't know if I saw Love Me Tender. Yeah, I've seen it. Was it one of those uh, 4 o'clock movies on Channel 7? No, I don't think they really showed that one very much. He, I mean, it he, was no Kid Galahad. He, he died. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's why it, it stands out. It wasn't the one where he was a race car driver. No, no, no. What about a nightclub singer? No, no. Um, he wasn't a scuba diver, a was plumber. Was he a cowboy? Or, you know, <laughs> he was a cowboy, yeah. He was a cowboy yeah, in Love Me Tender? Spoiler, he dies in the end. I'm sorry. Off but watch list. I think now I don't know if this is true or if it's an apocryphal story. But supposedly, after his mother saw him on screen dying, she got so upset that she made Elvis promise he would never do another movie where he died on screen. Only if she would ask him not to go to yeah. the bathroom. <laughs> 1959. <laughs> such, a, such a cheap joke. That's why we went for it. 1959. Johnny and the Moon Dogs. Played in the final round of the TV Star Search competition at the Hippodrome Theater, Manchester, England. You know who Johnny and the Moondogs were? I know who Johnny was. You know who the Moondogs were? You know the Beatles? Johnny and the Moondogs. Now that was the pre-Pete pre, pre Best. Yeah. So it was really just John and Paul at that point. I don't think George had joined. Johnny and the sure. Moondogs. Yeah, I can, no, George was there. I think George was at that point. Wait a minute, George's in there. Where's George? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. 1992, Ozzy Osbourne. He was born Oswald Osbourne. Just mm. Ozzy Osbourne announced his retirement after a gig in California saying, Really? Who wants to, to be touring at 46? Yeah. Hold on. I, Let I, me... Uh, I think they're still doing... Let I'm, me just type in Ozzy tickets... And oh well, wait a minute. But that's odd because I see right here that he's got concert dates that are happening. Well, he's he's past forty six. He's okay to tour now. <laughs> so At forty six, he didn't want to tour. You know to what tour. it was? It was it was astrology. <laughs> <laughs> he looked. He said, "You know, forty six is the one year I can't tour." Maybe it was uh, one of those. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, skip years, uh, leap years. Yeah, uh, one of those. Skip uh, years. You know where you yeah. you don't go to college after oh, high school. Uh, um, yeah, that. You know those. <laughs> what are they called? I forgot that. Too, now, what, is it, what do they call it when you just don't go to class? <laughs> hey, skip. Right. <laughs> 1995, Lee Ji Young became the first person to bungee jump from a flying paraglider in South Korea. In South Korea? That's very yeah. specific. Well, he did it in South Korea. So he's bungee jumping from a paraglider. That idea had to come up after a few beers. And finally, 2013, Sony launched the PlayStation 4, selling one mu uh, million units in one day. That's your two cent history lesson. I didn't get one. Oh, there's this year. Yeah. It's 2013, PlayStation 4. Yeah, maybe. I are we past that now? I, yeah, I think they're What on. are they on now? I don't know what they're on now. Uh, they're on. What are you on, people? Those people on dope. Yeah, I just. Uh... Uh, that's your two cent history lesson brought to you by Drew Goble at Oakland Insurance. Call Drew today, 248 647 2500. Drew Goble from Oakland Insurance. Uh, He'll take care of you. Looks like PlayStation 6. Is that where we're at already? I think. All right, I got to get Uncle Bill on the phone. We're late for class. You can blame me if you want. That was.
no, the PlayStation Six is not out yet. Not yet. Yeah, so it's still technically. I don't even 1. have a PlayStation One. Yeah. Hello, uh, Uncle Bill. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's us. Hey. Hi. I'm surprised. Oh, we're a little late. I'm sorry. I thought it was someone about my home warranty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, uh, Raphael Warnock in Georgia is texting you, and uh, so is Herschel Walker. Yeah. <laughs> they want your yeah. boy. I've gotten more texts in yes. the last 48 hours. I'm like, I know! Right. You know, they're headed to a runoff, you know. I did hear that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know if you've, I don't know if you've seen the news at all. What? What's happening now? Yeah. Okay. Are they, are they well, doing a race? Or? I mean... Yeah. Look, if they're actually going to race, I don't know. I got you know, and Herschel probably Herschel will probably up, win. Yeah, no, you don't know. Yeah, all right. So that's why there's today's, a... today's topic though is rather topical to this whole discussion. Okay, really? Because today's topic is going to be red and blue. Oh, red and blue. Right. Very, very, very nice. I spent a whole week looking at nothing but red and blue. Okay. So. Red and blue is our topic. What's our first question? Wow. So we're just going to get rid of the rest of the pleasantries and just move right into the contest. Right. Well, I Hold think on. Uncle Bill would like to talk about maybe a, a, a win by the... Oh, the Chicago Bear, or by the Detroit Lions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just yeah. figured you, you know, maybe wanted to... Uh... Well, I was actually at the game. Yeah. That's why yeah, I figured you'd want to... It was... That was uh, pretty was exciting. Fun. Huh? That was pretty exciting. It was, and uh, I had never been to Soldier Field in Chicago, and uh, I would highly recommend it. Great little stadium, and uh, they had good food, and uh, they were fairly well organized. Now, so, would you feel the same way if the Lions had lost? Yes, I okay. would. Right. He's uh, a fair judge of stadium character and food. Yes, because I went to uh, I went last year to the Minnesota game in Minnesota, and I would highly recommend that as well. That is a beautiful stadium. Yeah. Uh, great little setup there as well. They put on a better show in Minnesota before the game. Chicago, not so much. There's not as uh, well. It's kind of too the, cold there, isn't Minnesota in a dome? It is. Yeah. It is. But Chicago wasn't bad. I mean, it was. It was forty. You know, if you you if you were smart, you know, as a veteran of uh, Thanksgiving Day parades. Yeah, uh, you got to dress for the occasion. Yes, if you dress for the occasion, you're okay, and it was fine. There was no problem. So, um, but yes, the the fact that they won the game made it even more exciting. Um, and you're in enemy territory, so you have to be a little bit respectful. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, can't, yeah. you know, you just can't bust out with forward down the field. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it was more of a it was more of a golf clap. You know, yeah. like oh, oh. we've intercepted right. and returned the ball for what is believed to be a touchdown. Uh, yes, yay team. So. <laughs> Good job, fellows. <laughs> Hooray, I'm for the uh, other team. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so speaking of competition, yes, we're back to the red and the blue. All right, so here we are. Sunsets on Mars, are they blue or red? Hmm. It's a red planet. Yeah, so they oh. got to have a blue sunset. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's your answer? That's my guess. All right. All right, so Mike says it's got to be blue. Right. Yeah. John? I say it's blue also. All right. You guys are correct as if you stood on the surface of Mars itself. But, yes, they have blue sunsets. Yeah, it seemed a little too yeah. on the nose for it to be red. Since it's the All right. Planet. Well, I, you know, just a question. All right. Clifford, the big red dog. Yes. Is named after the author's, is it the author's dad? The author's first dog, the author's imaginary friend, or the author's older brother. Hmm. So, dad, oh. brother, imaginary friend, or his first dog, Clifford, the big red dog. Well, when you think about Clifford, the big red dog, which I don't do very often, I think the name Cliff or Clifford, you just don't hear that very often. Anymore. Right, that's why so it stood out as older a, time right, names. Right. So, I would say it's his imaginary friend. All right, so Mike says it's got to be his imaginary friend. Right. Uh, John? I was going to say it was his You can say that if you want. You can copy off me. I am. It was his imaginary friend. All right. Uh, technically, it's his wife's imaginary friend, but yes, that is Clifford. Uh, uh, his original... 
original uh, name for the dog was Tiny, and his wife said that is a boring name. Yeah. And then she mentioned that she had an imaginary friend growing up named Clifford, and so that's for it was, the, it was a very formal was, was relationship. Like, did she go to prom <laughs> with Clifford? Or? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> it seems like I didn't get into their whole. It was a long distance boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> was he from Canada? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Canadian Cliff. No, that was my imaginary friend. Right, right. We all had that uh -huh. imaginary yeah. Canadian. Oh, my Canadian friend. friend Clifford. Well, they had immigration problems, and that's why I went right. to prom by myself. Well, yeah, because, oh, yeah. You know, didn't have a passport. Yeah. U.S. government <laughs> just wouldn't let her in. Just <laughs> get across the border. Got <laughs> stopped at the border. <laughs> back in the 80s yeah. that tough border ah, you know how that had. was yeah. yeah yeah you remember how hard it was to get into canada back then oh, yeah. <laughs> Way you yeah. yeah yeah pay the toll yeah. all right <laughs> all right ease klein that's y-v-e-s got it k-l-i-e-n is what to the blue man group uh -huh. oh is it one of the founders? Is it the person that discovered and then started to promote them? Uh, is it the creator of their shade of blue? Or is it the creator of the band name? So, Yeats Klein, who is he? Is he a founder? Is he like their Colonel Tom Parker, their Discover promoter? Is he the creator of their shade of blue or the creator of the band name? Who is Mr. Klein? I gotta go first. Yep. I think uh, Eves was the creator of the color of the Blue Man Group. All right. Mike says he's the creator That's of their color. Klein Blue. John. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I'd say it was the creator of the color. Is, are you gonna copy off of Mike? No. John? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. John. I mean, I, I don't want you to be shamed. I have no shame, Uncle Bill. Yeah, you should know that. that by now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying it's the color of the, the blue thing. Yeah. All right, you are correct. Yes. <laughs> East Klein is actually an artist yeah. who was in love with the color blue oh. and specifically created a shade of blue for the blue band group. So all right. I have not been very deceptive at all today. No, you have. You just killed it. All right. Uh, last question Sammy Hagar was asked to sign an autograph as the Red Rocker back in 1978. Who was it that asked him to sign his first autograph as the Red Rocker? Was it his super fan Little John, his super fan Big John, his super fan Crazy Eddie, or his super fan T-Bone? Who was it that asked him? Wow, we got super and crazy. Yeah, we don't have any yes. super or crazy fans. We got crazy fans. Well, yeah. So who was who was the super fan that asked him to sign it as the Red Rocker? So Little John, Big John, Crazy Eddie, or T Bone? Little John, Big John, Crazy Eddie, or T Bone? Right. So was Little John with Robin Hood, or was that Big John? No, Big John was Jimmy Dean's buddy. Right. Little so John. I'm going to go Crazy Eddie. All right, so Mike says it has to be Crazy Eddie. Are you going to copy so you can tie me and take it to a tiebreaker? I gonna was going to say Crazy Eddie. <laughs> John, what do you think? I think it's Crazy Eddie. You're going to copy Mike? Yes. I don't know. It's just it's a coincidence four times in a row. Okay. <laughs> uh, Look at the well, strategy he pulled out. He's been working oh, on three yeah. weeks for this. <laughs> What? Yeah. I How'd that happen? So we're going to go to the tiebreaker. And the question is, how much did Sammy Hagar pay for his first guitar from Sears? <laughs> this is 1965. 1965, okay. he bought his first guitar from Sears. It costs anywhere, and it included an amp, by the way, Ooh. just to let you know. Oh, guitar and amp. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's the range of pricing from the Sears Roebuck people from $25 to $55. Because he can't time. drive $55. Right, nice. 
25 yeah, to 55, and he bought it at Sears, not at the Five and Dime. No, no, not at the Five and Dime, but at Sears in 1965. Was it a five string or a six string? That I do not know. I just know it was a guitar from Sears with an amp. Did it have a wah wah bar or a little no pedal? <laughs> <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are getting way too technical. Yeah. Well, so I have to go first between 25 and 55. <laughs> right. You know what? I'll go first no, if you want. You go ahead. Go first. And I then you can. In my head. And then you can choose to go over under. Right. I'll do that since I copied off you. I mean, I, I'm not. I'll admit it. Yeah. Of course I would. I had a strategy to win here. Yeah. Go for it. And so right. I'll go so, first, and then you can pick the over under. All right. So who's going, John? You're going. First. I'm going to go first. All right, what, what, what's the price tag there, John? $32.50. All right. John, $29.99. $32.50. Uh, Mike? $29.99. It's Sears. It was on sale. $29.99. All right. Are you guys ready? Yeah, barely. It was 31 bucks. John, you are this week's winner. Oh. It was $39.99. Oh my so, god, I was gonna say $39.99. Me? Yeah. Did yes. I win? <laughs> Look at all that knowledge. That, that little old me. <laughs> yep. All right. So John, you are the winner of this week's quiz. Yes. It has to deal with red and blue. Yeah. So because I'm there a you go. Well, how about that? Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Take my victory lap. Yeah. I was gonna say, John, what's your reaction to winning? I oh well, sure. I mean, you know, he, clearly he I've been gave I've, himself a pat on oh, the back, yeah. a little fist bump, and uh, I'm I'm the smart one. You know, yeah. All I mean, right. I think you can all see right. that I all right. copied just off this. Make sure. so, <laughs> took it down to the right, fifty fifty. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had a strategy and it paid off. You I'm did. not sorry. That's right. All right. Okay. All, all right, right Uncle Bill. We'll do it again next week when John will take the lead. Stay warm this week. Gonna be chilly. Don't so. forget your hat and scarf. No. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Uncle Bill, have a great week. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. All right, take care, guys. All right, see you. Too. All right, well, congratulations on that win. Yeah, and well, on that note, I think quite, we uh, quite a victory. For we me. remind people since it is getting colder, it's time to take care of your cars too. Murphy's Family Auto, take care of all your auto repairs, vehicle your, maintenance needs, and winterization yeah. as well. Your car knows. It knows a lot more than you think it does. That's true. Take it to Murphy's today. And if you say Mike and John sent me, you get 5% five, five off. That's right. It's a good deal. You know, if you say Mike and John sent you, you'll get 5% off. That's what I said. I know. I'm just, you know, continuing I know, to copy. copying again. <laughs> Murphy's Family Auto, give them a call today. They're open on Saturdays for your convenience from 8 to 1, 517-552-3040. Murphy's Family Auto. Your car knows. Right. You know what else? Do I know what's else? I'm not going to let you copy off me. I'm going to let you take this one all Are on you your sure? own. Well, ha first of all, I want you to know. What I, remember, we were trying to figure out what it is when you take a year off? Yeah. It's called the gap year. The gap year. That, yeah. I had to look that up. I, for some reason, I just couldn't remember. It was there's, bugging me. There was a gap in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a gap already. Right. <laughs> the gap year. Yeah. Uh, also, don't forget. Why were we talking about the gap year? Because <laughs> we're I, now that I forgot. Yeah, I can't look that up. Uh, Richter and Associates Property Management, of course, supporters here at Mike and John got it going on. They're licensed real estate brokers, rental property experts in Livingston, Genesee, and Oakland counties. Forty plus years in the business. Located in downtown Howell, they're online at richterassoc.com. That's R I C H T E R A S S O C dot com, or call them at 517-540-9560. Don't forget, December 3rd, we're giving away $1,000. Christmas in the bill. All right, Wow. Well, can I win? No. No. We're giving it away. Oh, we're giving it away. Yes, we right. are. Right. I was like, well, I, I got to get down to that Christmas in the bill. I can we're win $1,000 cash. Yes, you can. All right. We'll see you there. <laughs> Giggling with Mike and John. Tune in next time and giggle on. Yeah, fella. All right. That's some post show content that uh, I was going to use yesterday.
but I held off since Cougar was here. Okay. <clears throat> An informal study that was done by the Genius Lab Gear Company. Right. Not a formal study. No, informal. Very informal. The Genius Lab Gear Company. They did a study of 1,000 chemists and scientists, and they found that the majority of chemists and scientists, and probably pharmacists too, are not happy with their white lab coats. Mm. So this is, when you think about it, you see that pharmacist right. up there in the lab coat. And they're just not happy because of the fit. Oh, they don't like the fit. I yeah. thought they didn't like the style. Um, like they want something well, the different. style too. They want something a little more stylish because it's so boxy. Okay, that's what I was, yeah. 96% of women and 87% of men. And the scientists, chemists, pharmacists, maybe even barbers, said they have a problem with the fit of their lab coat. The main complaints, the shoulders are either too wide or too narrow. The overall shape too boxy to fit anyone unless you have a perfect cylinder type body. Mm, like plus, mine. Plus the, <laughs> plus the collar isn't high enough to protect from spills. If you're spilling this you high, that's here? a little weird. I mean, well, if, sometimes, if hey, you're working in the, lab, in the lab. Yeah, I mean, if you're working in the lab, yeah. I, you know, I, I guess. Did Quincy wear a lab coat? I think occasionally. I would imagine. I think occasionally did. You know, I don't think he walked in. With Sam did. Yeah. Well, yeah, Sam. Sam always had. Yeah, he kind of had the scrubs on. I think. Yeah, but yeah. then you got to put the lab coat on the but scrubs. Then, yeah, you don't want yeah. the scrubs getting right. dirty. <laughs> Plus, they're a, they they say, hey, we would like a little choice on color. White shows too much blood and right, stains. Right. So now, Genus Lab Company is going to answer that call with a jumpsuit. We hope that they will come through. Yeah. With new colors and styles, okay. better fit for our labists, chemists, scientists, pharmacists, our labists. And, and barbers too. <laughs> While we're at it, yeah, yeah. What about the butcher at the meat counter at the market? Sam the butcher. <laughs> That's right. He had a lab he coat. He wore a lab coat and the sleeves. You see how they you get that hang there? there? There's stuff sliding in no. there. You could find half a lamb in there for God's <laughs> sake. That's, well, that's how <laughs> Sam you know took care of Alice. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So they're hoping to have have new wearables by oh, August of oh, 2020. I mean, this has been a major issue. This has been a breakthrough story. I mean, I don't know, I don't know why it didn't first come up on the campaign trail. <laughs> there was too many other things yeah, there, on the ballot. But we now, can't vote on the lab coats. <laughs> but now. Well, I'm glad we've. Genius Lab Gear yeah. Company is coming through. Yeah, they are. So in 2023, probably after August, be sure to compliment that chemist. Maybe even dentist or doctor. Right. I don't know if they were asked to, but they wear lab coats, don't uh, they? Well, sometimes, yeah. They're kind of labby. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now you know. Yeah. There's sometimes people that wear lab coats and you're like, I, why are you, I don't understand. Like an optometrist. Yeah, that's true. It's not like they're going in. Well, I guess if they're going in. And not, a, like, not, not an ophthalmologist. Just an optometrist. <laughs> All right. This conversation <laughs> really needs to end. <laughs>